Anthony asked, responding to a recent blog post on our site about thermogenesis, quit teasing us and just tell us what foods increase thermogenesis. And Anthony, blogs two, three, and four in this series will answer just that. But I want you to consider one thing. Thermogenesis is the creation of heat in your body. Of course, calorie burning means just that. And the thermic potential of food relates to the calories it takes to digest that certain food. So a really complex food takes more calories to digest and assimilate. And so literally, a lot of the food you consume just kind of takes care of itself in the fact that it takes calories to digest it. So you're almost looking for those freebies or discounted foods where you get more bang for your buck. And of course, again, something with more density, a complex protein. Protein has the highest thermic effect of food, and it always will. It just takes more to digest and break down. But what people don't understand is that complex carbohydrate can give you the same thing. You can get almost as high of a thermic effect, you know, 30 to 35 percent. Fat has an extremely low thermic effect. So no getting around it. You're never going to see much more than about 3 to 5 percent of a thermic effect from fat. So even if you think you're going to avoid carbohydrates and keep those at bay and just fill your diet with fat, you're not going to get the same calorie burning. And so keeping protein spread throughout the day in three or four meals, that's kind of the threshold of what your body can use. And then again, think about the complexity of carbohydrates. Something that's more complex is going to help. But there's a little caveat because the best calorie burning you go through is activity. It's with activity. So if, if sitting around all day, you're burning about 75 calories per hour, just as an example, and then you go train and you might burn 400 to 600 calories in that hour, certainly that has far more effect than the, the thermic effect of food. And so there are times when even a simple carbohydrate can kind of prime that pump for a much better workout. You don't want a heavy, complex carbohydrate before a workout, for example. So once again, I have to go back to context and timing. Uh, go for the, the most dense foods you can for thermic effect, for the stable whole food meals in your diet. Things with protein, complex carbohydrates, and then look for the timing of where you're going to put some of those high glycemic where they can ramp up a thermic effect far greater than the thermic effect of food, but the thermic effect that you tag on to your training, and that's where high glycemic carbs can come in handy.